Welcome everybody to the Minecraft session of the Virtual Round Table, something we've been really looking forward to. And it will not be a presentation type um, session symposium. It will be a very practical session with us being able to see what Minecraft is all about. And I'm so delighted to be joined by Dave Dodgson, by Van Stevens and Jeff Kuhn. Dave is not on webcam, but he will be moderating the session, so I'll pass over. Yes, that's right. Okay, thank you very much, Heike, for, for introducing us. Yes, got to get the, uh, the right pronunciation on the H sound in the middle. I'm, I'm joining you from Bahrain today. Uh, thank you for joining us for this session. And um, yeah, as Heike said, we're going for a slightly different kind of session here. Rather than giving you a presentation, we're just going to be taking you uh, into the Minecraft server that has been the focal point of the um, EVO Minecraft MOOC session that's been running for the last um, three years, I guess. It's the third one that took place earlier this year. Um, first, though, I'll just introduce my uh, my fellow speakers who are with us today. We have um, Jeff Kuhn here with us. He's um, a recent graduate from Ohio University, uh, excuse me, Ohio University with a PhD in instructional technology. And his dissertation focused on how people collaborate to problem solve within online multiplayer games, which is certainly something I, I'd like to read at some point. Sounds very interesting, Jeff. And um, he's been a moderator of the EVO Minecraft MOOC since its founding back in 2015. And his research interests are focused on communities of practice, games and learning, and computer-assisted language learning. So welcome, Jeff. Thank you for joining us today. And we're also joined by Vance Stevens, um, who is based in Al Ain in the UAE. But I believe, Vance, you're joining us today from Doha in Qatar. Is that right? That's right. I'm here to meet. I just today met my new grandson. His name is Kai. And I'm at the house of my uh, uh, one of my sons. They both live in Doha. OK, great. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much, Tyson. OK, so his, um, his online work um, is very extensive. It includes being the founder of Webheads in Action. He's the internet editor for the TESOL EJ. He runs a podcast series, Learning Together, which um, now has over 360 episodes. And since 2002, he's been one of the coordinators of TESOL Call Interest Section, uh, Electronic Electro Electronic Village Online, and he's now in his third year as the founder and co-moderator of the EVO Minecraft MOOC. So um, I'm going to just stop sharing the slides now to take you into the game world. If you'll just uh, bear with me for a second. Yeah, and uh, on the topic of learning together, uh, I always say this, Heike knows this, uh, I always uh, Tell, I'm sort of doubling this as learning together episode 368. I'll be blogging it as such. And um, I always try to tell people in my episodes the date. Today is the 5th of May, 2017. So people joining us in the recording can know when we were here. And uh, actually, though, we're at the virtual okay, roundtable right. web conference that I hold every year. OK, great. Thank you for that, Vance. So um, here we are. We're inside the um, server that's been created as a, the central point of the EVO Minecraft MOOC. And um, we're currently in the longhouse, which is kind of the starting point for people joining the server. Um, I think, uh, who created the longhouse, actually? That's I think. Created by Linda and Rose. They might I be think. here with us at the moment. Maybe Linda could tell us. I think. Yeah. Did, did we ever give Linda the microphone? Linda Geelan uh, is with us at the moment. Rose. Yes. She says she helped a little. I don't know. Are, are you able to talk to us, Linda? 
You're more than welcome to join us. Okay, well, she's she may have to get her mic adjusted, but anyway, Linda has uh, joined us, I think, last year, as I recall, and they built extensively on the server, and she became a moderator in the, the most recent session this year, 2017. And um, so ba basically, people, um, uh, Dave was one of our first moderators in 2015, and then he's rejoining us next year, 2018, as a moderator. He, he came back in 2017, and uh, I, we, we might run over to some of his builds. He's got a really nice mine in the bottom of his winter house, which we'll probably all go to. Basically, the spawn area, when anybody dies, they come back to this room that we're looking at right here. Um, at one end, maybe, um, Dave, you could turn around and show people the tutorials down at the end of the hallway on the other direction, I think. Yeah, down there. And there's a wall yeah, sure. of tutorials here that mm -hmm. I believe Aaron Aaron's made these. Is that correct? That, that stairway to your left leads down to a mine. And and what these are these are the boxes. When we start out, uh, Linda and Rose made sure they were full of cobblestones and uh, and sticks and things like that, so that people could uh, use those pictures to make the. E each one of them shows a, a three by three grid, and uh, maybe Dave, you could maybe show them uh, how uh, there's a crafting table in there somewhere. You could click on it and show them the grid. Yeah. So um, anyway, yeah, so that's, how, that's how you build but, uh, in Minecraft, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you want, yeah, to, sorry, he's so looking right now at uh, what is it? That's an axe. That's yeah, an axe. For making an axe. That's right. So yeah, that's right. And uh, so if you, uh, I'm not sure if there's anything in the boxes right now, but if you, oh, that, there's a crafting table just to his right there. So if you click on the crafting table, okay. He's looking in the chest right now. There's some items in the chest. There you go. You see the crafting table there. You move the items into the crafting table in the same pattern that uh, you can see on the wall. And so right now he's making a stove. No, he's making a helmet. Okay. Yes, he's made himself a helmet, which we might use in Minecraft. Minecraft is player versus game. So we don't really attack each other. I think there is a player on player mode, but um, actually I have never experienced that. Um, so, uh, basically, people make objects that they have to carry with them in the game. Probably the most important object, uh, well, to begin with, is a pick. Uh, you need a torch, so you, when you go digging in the earth and finding things, to finding resources where you can make more objects, then you, um, um, you, you'll need a torch. So there's a there's a picture of a torch just there. We just saw it. So this this room shows you how to make these objects. So when you first come into the game, you can make the basic tools that you need. Most people, when they start the game, they'll go punch some trees and get some wood. And um, from that, you can make sticks. And the sticks, as you can see, go into making a pick or the, the other things he's looking at there. Hmm? Mm, I don't know. She took it out of here. My granddaughter. My granddaughter is here. I also have a granddaughter. That's a. She also lives in Doha. <laughs> is Mariana able to? Are Are you able to get a, a microphone, Mariana and Linda? Or have you got yours activated yet? Cool? You're certainly willing. Uh, welcome to chime in. We're just, tell if you guys can just hear me checking right? out the longhouse now. Oh, cool. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was working. I would do yeah, to the Yeah, fine, Linda. Yeah, we can hear you just fine. One thing uh, in Minecraft, you have to uh, monsters come out at night, and if you can see in the windows, there's there are two things that are kind of bad out there. First of all, it's raining. The rain seems to bring the monsters, and um, um, I, it's kind of lit up out there, so the monsters aren't coming around too much where there's light. But uh, you can see it's dark outside. If we all had, I've got a bed. If we all, yeah, gave, we're venturing outside. Let's see, let's go follow. Uh, um, I think Dave just went outside. There we go. 
no telling what could happen out here. Could be dangerous. But anyway, uh, we can make it light by all sleeping at once. But if you can't do that, then um, you have to be careful at night. But nighttime and daytime last about 20 minutes each. So uh, the way you start Minecraft is you, you come out into a world like this. I see it's starting to get light. Um, you come out into the world and... Um, ooh, sorry, I'm trying to drive it with the wrong computer here. Uh, you, you knock down some trees and you start building things out of wood and uh, you can build a structure. You need, you, the longhouse itself is a structure. It has doors and it's, um, uh, it's a safe place. You can close the doors. It has windows you can see outside. And it's got a little post up there on top of it uh, that lights it up so we can see it from afar. If you want, I could take you over to my house uh, and that would show you, or oh, there's Linda's house, Linda could take you to her house. It's a pretty amazing house. Should we go there first or should we go to my house? Or, and Dave's, one of Dave's houses is Mine's over that way as bridge. well. Sure. Should we go to your house, Linda? Show, you, show people around? Yeah, okay. Shall we go over there? There we go. Linda's going across the bridge. So if we just go there, we can look at Linda's house. Linda uh, builds, she's very good at building. She's very experienced. Uh, maybe you could tell us how you got your experience, Linda. But um, she, she she makes these houses so that people, it's right next to the longhouse. So she sets things up here, like there's a refrigerator inside where people can get food. She has a tree farm uh, down below the house where people can get wood. And she sort of, she's a very community-minded uh, person who uh, makes places that people can go and stay and uh, find resources and things like that and get themselves while they're getting oriented in the game. Sure. If we go inside, so um, maybe she could show us around. To I haven't done too much in as far as furniture in here, but to this side is the living area with a little desk area over here. And uh, so I've been trying different styles of building. I love building. I've been doing this since 2011. Got started in it at my school when my headmaster gave us, uh, gave me a particular uh, article concerning the Minecraft uh, EDU uh, version that came out at that time. And so that got me started, as well as some students who were dying for me to put it in our computer lab so that they could play. And we've incorporated in our computer literacy program since then. Um, so on the other side over here was uh, what, what Vance was talking about, the refrigerator and the uh, kitchen area. And so I don't think there's any food in there anymore. Someone left some arrows. <laughs> I guess they're wanting to, to shoot somebody while they hit that button. Um, but anyway, there was it was filled with food. Ask a question, because um, anyway, I seem to have had to download again Minecraft here on this machine. I don't know where I did it last. I don't, sure. you know. Was, but anyway, um, I've got the account. I got uh, logged in. But now I want to put in the URL, this uh, server space. Uh, where do I put it in? Uh. Uh. You have to connect with the server, and you have to be in Minecraft version 10 point one, no, 10 point, uh, what is it, 10 point two point one? I can't remember. You have to change the server. Do we have any instructions on uh, We might have some instructions somewhere at our community page. Um, uh, it would be nice if we could get Heike in here joining already us. On one can anyone talk her in better than I can? Okay. Um. Yeah. When you get in, when you first log into, do you the know game, if you're in the 110 version? Yeah. Basically, when you launch the app, you have to. Single you have to. Uh, there's a way to set the version that you're operating on. Um, and you should see it at the bottom. Okay. What the version is that you the have. The version uh, is 1.11.2. Okay. You need to change that to 1.10.2. 
Uh, so you're going to have to. Here. Uh, Mr. Snake is Philip Smolchitz. He's the 11 year old son, or uh, probably 12 by now, of Mariana. And uh, he uh, first started telling people about Minecraft when he was. One point ten point two. Okay. Yeah, it says one point ten point two. So you have to be in the right version and then and and wherever you set up connect to a server, you uh put in the IP address and then that should get you there. I would think you have to log on as yourself, of course. You have to be able to log on to Minecraft. And then we'll need to whitelist you for the server. Philip is 13 now. Okay, so we've known him for three years, and Philip, um, we wrote uh, Marianna and Philip wrote an article in the Tesla EJ. Um, the um, a, about how Philip is learning English or, or made himself fluent in English largely through Minecraft. So that's because he communicates with people. Uh, around the world about what he does. He uh, he learns about Minecraft using English. He uh, has a, a, a YouTube video channel where he puts uh, his recordings of his games up there. And um, he's basically involved with students, with, with people, peers from other countries who uh, learn a lot about Minecraft. In fact, I'm sure Dave will tell you a little bit about his experiences with Minecraft in Turkey and other places that he's been teaching. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll wait for another question, then maybe at some point I'll start talking about how we started EDO Minecraft. I don't know if you wanted EDO to see the upper floor. That's where why. I put a bunk, kind of some bunk beds. So. Maybe should we just to have variety? Should we move? Okay, we could run up there. Let's run over and look at the upper floors, and uh, then then maybe just to have variety, we'll uh, we'll run over to my place, which passes by one of Dave's first houses, and uh, I can just show you. I've got kind of a sustainable area there, and um, I'll just we'll just talk a little bit about that, and then maybe. We could pop over to Jeff's, which is just over the hill. Um, he's he's a very elaborate builder, and um, I think Dave wants to take us to the mines down below his winter castle. Or we could actually we could all run over the uh, the Tiaga to get to the winter castle from my place. That's an interesting trip. <clears throat> then maybe we could get back to Jeff's. Do you have a teleport, or you could probably do you, do you have a, a warp set on your place, Jeff? Yeah, I can hear you from live and clear. Can you hear me, Jeff? Yes. Can everybody can hear, hear me? You. Sound check. Sound check in Adobe. Not getting any feedback. Jeff is typing. Yeah, we can all hear you. So before we go much I further, I can hear I Linda. She apparently could hear me. I might have dropped off the. Yes. Okay. I could. People can hear me. That's fine. Well, I can't hear Jeff though. What, what is? What's the problem there? Anyway, this house was very useful to me when I first um, came to Minecraft. I was going to tell you why I started uh, EVO Minecraft MOOC. I had Philip was one of my early experiences with Minecraft. That is the language learning aspects of it, and uh, I had been researching Minecraft probably since about 2009, 2000. I, I guess. Yeah, I, I probably I, I believe it was developed in 2009, wasn't it? Um, but anyway, about then, teachers began to see great benefits of uh, using it for all kinds of things they're trying to teach. 
as some people, someone said, the curriculum is in it. So, um, yeah, sounds good. Just about whatever you want to teach, you you can do that in Minecraft. Shall we run over to run down the path over to my house while it's still light out? If you want to follow me, we can. We've got just enough light. I think we're having a little bit of lag on the server because I'm outside the server now. <laughs> I'm outside the house. So uh, it looks like there's some lag coming from Dave's. Um, Dave is still... Yes, okay, there we go. All right, so I'll be, I'll, run, I'll be running over there while I'm talking. So I'm going to run down the path to my house, which we can all go inside and be safe. And... Okay, let's see. I'm running past Dakota, and I'll just turn around and see if people are following me. But Dave is, or the server, it could be getting a little lag there. I believe it must must be. Um, okay, Mrs. Geelan is following and me on the server. All right. It's very dark in this little area here. Okay, well, she's going very fast. All right, so anyhow, um, I became interested in Minecraft, and but the problem was that I, all the, the people who are really using it for education that I was following are using it with students, and the, I wasn't really able to um, uh, join anybody and play Minecraft with them. So we're passing by... Uh, I'm passing, Linda is at Dave Donaldson's house. I was going to show you mine because I've got kind of a sustainable area here. So what I decided I needed to do, this is my house here, it's quite well lit up, there's a fence around it so we can all go inside the yard. And um, there we go, we've got Dave is with us, Linda is with us. I suppose other people could teleport to where we are. Okay, so snake uh, Philip has come. All right, so anyway, so the the, the idea, uh, since I've been active in Electronic Village Online for some time, I had the idea that uh, we could, um, that I could get a community together in Electronic Village Online, EVO, and that community could, um, um, in the community, we would learn how to play Minecraft. And that's exactly what happened. Um, I started the, I proposed the EVO session, and a lot of people thought it was a really nice idea. Jeff Kuhn was one of them. And uh, Dave Donaldson was also, uh, Dave Dodgson, sorry, was also, I, I used to go, know a guy named Dave Donaldson. That's why I keep confusing that name. But anyway, Dave Dodgson um, also, uh, was doing, he, he was somebody we had researched for the article that we wrote with Philip, when Philip wrote, and, and Mariana wrote the article about um, how Philip was learning English and becoming fluent in it. Then these guys were people whose work I was reading and who were suggesting that um, uh, they also had their experiences with, with language learning there. So we got them, uh, uh, Jeff uh, offered to run a server for us, which and it's been run from Ohio University ever since. Aaron Schwartz is now managing that server. Um, so basically, we sort of just proposed EVO Minecraft MOOC, and uh, once you get the, ex the session accepted, then we can get other people to join it. And we attracted experts and also people who just wanted to learn about Minecraft. And it worked really well. We started a, a Google Plus community for it. We've been working in that space. Oh, there's a spider there. <laughs> okay. We have to deal with the spider. The tough spider. Here. Okay. Tough spider. <laughs> there we go. I think we got it. Okay. So, um, in any event, that's the community that is built up around. EPO Minecraft MOOC for the past three years, started out as something that we kind of had a syllabus for, but as time has gone on, we've just come here and, and started building these things. And actually, Linda Geelan made a, a, um, a video in our first year where she told us how to make tree farms and 
uh, I haven't done it exactly the way she did it, but you can go on Google and you can uh, um, learn how to do just about anything you want to do. Um, so how to build a fence, how to um, make steps, for example, uh, uh, how to find animals. I've got some pigs around here. I'm not really sure what to do with them, but uh, I've got ducks in the yard and they lay eggs and uh, eggs are useful in making other things. So anyway, you learn how to do these things as you interact with your community. That's basically how you become proficient in Minecraft. And until you've got that community, you can't, it's really difficult for uh, someone who doesn't, just to come into the game and play by themselves. Maybe other people can sort of take up the narrative at this point, but that's, um, that was the idea. Just, just to learn how to do what I've uh, built here, it's, very, uh, it's, it's not very elaborate, but it took me about three years to get to the point where I am comfortable now. Um, and Linda said she started in 2011 and she's become quite proficient. And other people have gone a lot faster than I have. But uh, in any event, and, and maybe Jeff will talk about the stages of um, hanging out, uh, what was it, hanging, hanging out and uh, uh, I can't remember, anyway, geek goes to geeking out hanging out, oh, messing around, hanging out and geeking out, that's it. So you first start, when you first go to Minecraft, you sort of mess around and you just learn a little bit about building and that I spent almost a whole year doing that. Uh, the next year I was really um, hanging out more, learning a lot more about it and now I've come to where I'm geeking out. I really enjoy being in the game and I feel I'm proficient uh, I can, uh, I'm actually, I'm considering starting it with students where I am, which is a big hurdle to get over because of the pushback I'm getting there. But in any event, um, I suppose maybe we should come in, or maybe we should wait till daylight and then go across the Tiaga over to uh, Dave's place. I think I'm kind of ready for okay. Jeff's part of the presentation. We can still wander around a little bit. So we'll just as you guys wander. Uh, I'll, I'll close the door here. Okay. I've got a little ferry service on the river up here. If we come this way, I can show it to you. I, um, I I built a little fairy house here. My idea was to build Yeah, I think we're getting some lag here. I was just running here to show the I've I've, I've put some boats on the river and um, I've built a couple of fairy landings. And we can actually more easily go over the Tiaga to uh, to Dave Dodgson's winter house. If it's if it's sun up, we can do that. Let's see what's in this chest here. There should be some boats in here. There is one boat left in the chest. Okay, let's go overland to the to Dave's place. Go ahead, Jeff. If you will follow me, or we'll just take a trip overland to books. Dave Dodgson's house. I'm finished talking. I think we have some lags here that are creating. Uh, uh, some disjuncts on what we're looking at on our. Here we go. I've lost track of people. Here's a there's a creeper there, standing behind Dave. I think someone has dispatched it. 
Okay, so if we come, if you follow me, I'll take people in game over to Dave's winter house. There we go. I think people are following me. Okay. Jeff, go ahead. Oh, no worries. Sorry to um, interrupt you. I'll, oh, I'll be quiet for a while and wait for Jeff's lag to you catch know, up. With the, with the game, you know, when we first... Okay. So, in real-time world right now, uh, I'm heading Dancing over to Dave Dodgson's winter summer house, or winter house. He calls it the winter house. We've got a path lit by torches. Okay, people are coming Dance, along. Can you hear us? In Minecraft, you can also... Oh, don't want to fall in here. Oh, uh -oh, oh, let me get out of here. Is, there we go. There we are. Okay, I still don't have a path here. <laughs> okay, follow this torch trail. Apologies, I've, I've now muted Ben. I, think I can hear you. Quite drastically. Because uh, he quiet. keeps talking to himself, I believe. Okay. Oh, watch out. There's oh, a no, I can't mute him. mine pit there. I, don't I can't mute him longer. Let me just okay. demote him real quickly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to participant so level so we can yeah. get some Follow the torch, you know. And you'll come There's out a... to. We, we've got a very pretty part of the server here. <laughs> This is how we <laughs> shut him up. <laughs> oh, <the trap. laughs> uh, this is uh this okay, so thanks, Psyche. We we'll capitalize on this on this learning opportunity. Um, be stuck here. It's uh you know, uh, Constance oh, Steinkuller, oh, games and learning researcher, she okay. talks about the mangle of <laughs> play. And this is a really great thing. Yeah. Where I can um, climb up here. You know, we're trying to do with the the Minecraft it must be must be tree branches. It teaches a space climbing. to learn about right, games a little bit. You know, a lot of times Something for the teachers, they think about a game as a product. You know, we're gonna do this. Maybe it's a Jeff, Jeff, we have to wait Maybe until the sound more. packages are over. Like we're still hearing that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to wait. I think he's he's so, okay. So you could come on and tell us. Anybody <laughs> is welcome to, uh, to talk to him. us. The normal. He has no longer a microphone. For some reason, I'm not. I uh, know he has. <laughs> he's out there. Uh, I, I just went back into the, 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 the room out of the screen sharing to do the same thing. <laughs> This. Uh, okay. <laughs> he's so involved in the game that he's talking to himself, and I cannot, for, for life of me, seem to mute him. Uh, it jumps back all the time. He's in a state of full. <laughs> no, you cannot mute Vance. <laughs> Especially when he drops into a dead hole and just gets yeah, excited how to get out of it. Really <laughs> mess, so. I think it's... So, you know what we what we really wanted to do with the Minecraft MOOC is just create a community of, of practice for the participants. Um, and one thing you'll notice really quickly is the difference between moderator and participant in our community is almost negligible um, because we really have a very open-ended process because we wanted this community to be very much like the way our students learn to play games. You know, thinking about it as more than just you know, learning to play Minecraft as software and more about 
learning about Minecraft as a, as a community and, and developing our teachers, you know, and our participants, their, their games literacy. And that's been great because we've had so many different participants all coming in with different aspects of, of what, you know, we call games literacy. Um, and we've moved on into a big community. One of the first things we did was we set up a Google Plus community where people can uh, post comments and share videos and links. And one of the things we do is um, we don't delete that community year after year. So now we have three years worth of content on that Google Plus community because it creates this archive that, that teachers can go back into. They can look for specific information. And that's something that, that our students will do when they're learning about a game. You know, Minecraft comes with very few instructions. The expectation is you'll go out and find that information online. You'll search for things on YouTube and, you know, Reddit, go to Discord, um, things like that. And so it's what we really tried to replicate for our community here. So it's really uh, a bit different where it's not a top-down directed you know, step by step, we're going to learn this thing this week or this thing this day, but it's what do you need to learn? The community will make that available. Um, and it has its its pros and cons. Um, the pro is it's, it's very flexible and it's very much like the way our students engage with games. You know, this sort of process approach where they're always part of the game. Um, the downside is, you know, we've had probably about 300 people sign up for our uh, EVO Minecraft MOOC on the Google Plus community, and maybe less than 50 have ever joined the server. Um, so we still have a lot of folks who are more um, more reluctant to just sort of jump in there and do things. And so our, I guess our next step for the community is figuring that part out of how do we get teachers to to play first and learn second, because it is sort of different than um, our traditional approaches to professional development or you know, how we learn with, with media like books or television or music or things like that. So we're trying to make not just the game gamey, but um, the way we learn it as well and try to replicate the way our students engage with games. So that's that's part of the uh, the messiness that even you're seeing, you know, uh, just as a normal part of the community, it's it's very much the way things are. But I, I would like to, to jump Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Um, we seem to be in the midst of a snowball fight here, but uh, yes. Um, just to, for me coming into the game, I very much came into the game from, from a, as a teacher, uh, from a teacher's point of view, that my students just, um, I, I kept hearing the, the name of Minecraft being mentioned a lot. And, um, and it reached a point where it, it kind of spilled into classroom work. I was doing a lot of project work with young learners in Turkey at the time. And um, it started with um, a story writing task that my students had. And I had one group that were struggling for ideas. And um, I told them that, you know, they, they just had to, you know, they had to come up with something. They had to create their own world for the story. And when I said that to them, they said, well, create our own world. Well, could we then, could we set our story in Minecraft? So I said, OK, go ahead. And uh, then suddenly they, they switched from being a group who were sat there blankly looking at a piece of paper with, uh, with not many ideas coming out to suddenly this hive of activity. And they were, they were coming up with all sort, sorts of ideas and generating a lot of excitement. And then they had time at home to finish the, uh, to finish the project, and when they came back to class a week later, they'd created a PowerPoint which they'd filled with screenshots from the game, and then they they'd written out a three chapter story about um, one of their adventures in Minecraft and how that they how they all came together to fight off these hordes of creepers and zombies that were attacking them. So, and uh, that was really well received, and then other kids in the class started to say, well, you know. Can I do that for my next project? Can I do something with Minecraft? So you know, I just rolled with it. I said, "Okay, go ahead." And um, in the first, I would say the first year and a half that I was using Minecraft with students, or I should say more accurately, having my students use Minecraft in this way, I never actually uh, touched the game myself. I never, I didn't own a copy. I never logged in. 
but I had students coming up with increasingly elaborate things. They were, uh, as I said, taking screenshots to produce um, PowerPoints and posters. They were then starting to screen capture videos of the game and narrate themselves um, uh, as they were doing something in the game. We had a, another project later on about the natural world. So I, I then had students who were gathering different animals in the game and making farms and then recording videos of it and then bringing the videos to class to, to share with everybody. Or I had um, then a different group of students who explored different biomes in the game. So they showed what the desert is like in the game, what a kind of um, snowy tundra, much like the one we're in now, is like in the game, and then drawing, making comparisons between what it's like in the game world versus what it's like in the real world. So that was you know, very interesting how they were, they were doing a lot of this without my direction as well. They were coming up with all these ideas, and really, if I compared it to when we hadn't been using something like Minecraft, it really was something much different, um, uh, much more engaging for the students and much more productive. And um, yeah, that was kind of how I, how I got started with using the game in class. But um, as for learning the game myself, well, that's another story which I'll maybe come back to a bit later. Um, if, if Jeff would like to pick up from, uh, from where he left off, uh, I'll come back to my story a little bit later. Sure, Dave. I'll jump back in. Um, hey, so you can see, you know, with with our community, we have, uh, you know, each year we have people who who join, and what we do is we change the the location of the what they call the spawn point or where the game begins, and we change that so that way the new participants for that year can kind of build their own community, and we have um, several communities now spread out across this map and. Just like our Google Plus community, this server uh, never shuts down. And then it was uh, at the end of last year, because we typically did this for TSOL's Electronic Village Online. So we ran it for, for, for about five weeks in 2015. Then we ran it for five weeks in 2016. And then uh, a few of the, the participants turned moderators, you know, we, uh, Rose and, and Linda being the, the two main kind of push for it, argue that we should just keep the server running all year long. And so now we've had this server running for about two years and you know nothing gets deleted. So we've built this um, in-game history and this legacy of all this uh, you know activity amongst the, the teachers. And then the Google Plus community is, is a little more of a sort of academic or, or technical based content that we can post on there. So people will you know link to Minecraft um, articles or videos, uh, talks and things like that. So we have these um, two kind of cooperative spaces, the the learning space and the creation space. But what's really important, I think, for the uh, learning of Minecraft and getting involved is just to, to jump into the game and, and start playing and being comfortable with the, the ambiguity of it and not knowing where to begin or how to do things. And you'll find out, you'll figure it out uh, through playing with other people. And so, you know, getting teachers kind of comfortable with that is very much that first step in in becoming you know games literate that I keep mentioning, and so you can see a lot of times this is what it looks like, and it doesn't look like teachers. Um, you know, we're not really um, playing it from that perspective, but playing it more is just to have fun with the community, and it's through this interaction with one another that that questions will start to develop, and people will start to engage in in bigger ideas. Um, you know, they'll they'll see one person doing something, you know, Linda's build, building a house and Vance will say, well, how did you do that? And that's where the learning starts to come in. Um, and it's not really something that you can put on a discussion board or have a, a presentation or, or a web, webinar about exactly because it's it's much more organic in, in how these things come out. And it's very kind of contextualized. So I think Mariana wants to, to join in if she's able. Um, and so, you know, kind of that thing I'd like to, to kind of leave with here is, you know, Mariana is a great example where her son is, you know, 13. Uh, the rest of us are much, much older, but he's an equal participant. Um, you know, the idea that everyone has expertise that they can contribute 
is really important to a, a community like this. And that's what really helps make it thrive is giving everyone equal space. So a lot of our participants move into more of a moderator role later on. They get server privileges and administration privileges within the game um, because they're just a full, uh, a, um, a valuable asset to the community. Would anyone else like to chime in? I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right as far as like, Sorry. you know, Go. what attracts Minecraft is that uh, the students can work together to do different things and they can tell. Um, I often have, I have an all boys, I'm in an all boys school. So I have two factions, the ones that want to build, 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 and then the ones that want to fight, fight, fight. <laughs> But when you put uh, objectives on uh, them or what they need to do, they go for it. They, they start to cooperate with one another, share with one another, trade with one another. And it sounds like the stock market because you'll hear them, you know, I've got this. Anybody want to trade for that? Uh, so it's a, it's a lot of fun to listen to the guys to see how they trade and negotiate and collaborate together uh, in spite of the fact that they all want to fight one another. <laughs> As far as my school is concerned, I'm sure if girls were in there, it would be a different thing. Go ahead, Dave. Oh, yeah, I had a very, thanks, Marianne. I had a very similar experience. Um, sorry. <laughs> Okay, well, if I, if I continue on that thought, yeah, I had a very similar experience in um, Gabon, where uh, at the school there I set up a, an after-school Minecraft club, and we had that same kind of battle between those who wanted to build all the time and those who wanted to fight all the time. So we had uh, we had a group group of students who were always saying uh, they, they wanted to set up a creative world, they wanted to be given kind of a free a free reign to work on some different building projects. Uh, projects, but then we also had a group who wanted to set up a uh, survival world like the one we're in now, uh, and uh, their interest wasn't so much in fighting those generated mob elements in the game, but setting up bases and fighting each other. Um, and that is one of the things, uh, one of the classic kind of criticisms and questions people, question marks people have about using games uh, in an education setting um, is, you know, that question of, well, is this some kind of, you know, bringing violence into the, the classroom in some way. Um, we had a situation um, shortly after I moved to Gabon um, back in Turkey where uh, they considered banning the game uh, for those reasons. Um, but that's not something I've experienced. I mean, this is, this is kind of violence in the same way that Tom and Jerry is violent, perhaps. That's a that's the closest the closest uh, analogy we can draw. Um, it is a part of the game, but it's a survival game. So, um, you know, part of the thing about the students coming together and working together is when you put them in this survival mode, they have to work together um, to survive. One thing I did with my students to the ones who wanted to fight all the time, I, I gave them quite an extreme version of the server where I used my teacher controls to permanently set the server to night, and they had no choice but to band together. Um, and that was kind of a learning experience for them then that we, we carried over to, to further sessions. Um, uh, even in the creative world where the, the danger element of the game is gone, they still have to come together and collaborate to, um, uh, to, to realize these fantastic ideas for projects. And I've had uh, I had what we had one session where students tried to recreate wonders of the world. So they were building the pyramids and uh, they were building other famous historical buildings around the world. But those were such large scale projects that they had no choice but to work together to be able to get it done. I think as long as you set up the objectives for the students, um, as long as giving them a little bit of creativity, but also uh, rules and rules of etiquette that they need to follow. Uh, you can kind of control what could happen. Every now and then, though, I, I've given the option to just go in and play just to kind of get their frustrations out. And I thought, okay, now we're back to our focus and what we need to do and, and the objectives we need to do. I often set up Google Forms that they need to submit 
to get into the server that gives uh, me feedback on what they've been doing and what they've been working on. And that also can document what the students are doing in the classroom. So that kind of is their ticket into my server. Uh, they've got to make sure that they're responding to that as well. Okay, well, shall we, uh, shall we go and explore? I taught a class at my university where we used, uh, we used the book. Sorry, Jeff, you go ahead. And so we combined a book and Minecraft. So what happened in, in the game? And so, you know, one of the ways you can use a game like this is to pair it up with a traditional piece of, of media, like, um, you know, the Hunger Games is really popular right now, Hunger Game maps in Minecraft. Uh, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, things like that. So they yeah, that reminds me of another thing we did with the, my learners in Turkey was we'd have um, uh, we had these story books that we read during the term and. Um, a classic project which I've done many times over the years was to have the sh have the students continue the story in some way, either through writing an extra chapter of what happened next, or making uh, performing a short drama, making a video, and then that transferred over to Minecraft as well. So I had students recreating scenes from the book in Minecraft, and or or telling the story of what happened next, summarizing the plot somehow through setting things up in Minecraft and narrating the video, which was quite an interesting way for them to to approach the project. <laughs> well, Someone asked in the chat, they asked if uh, Minecraft promoted critical thinking. If, um, if I could just chip in some, some practical that. realities of trying to install a software. <laughs> No, I mean, you told me to go for another version of Minecraft. So, I mean, I downloaded 1.11.2, and so I deinstalled 1.11.2, and I went to look for the on the web for an older version, which I thought was an older version. Okay. And I was just about to install a Russian older version until I thought, no, it can't be really. I can't find the older version. Mojang has taken it off their site. And... Um, the, then, then I tried to re de after having deinstalled this version because I thought I installed another version. I now tried to reinstall Minecraft, and the reinstallation didn't, for some reason, work. Obviously, I might have to reboot or get clean of clean the system, but this second reinstallation of the version doesn't work. So what I do is I go to the iPad. And then I tried to download the Minecraft on the iPad, which I know it works on the iPad. So I tried to download, and it cost $7.99, which is not a big deal. However, my credits of iTunes have run out, so I'm putting in my MasterCard details. And guess what? Because I'm based in Brussels with my MasterCard, but they wouldn't accept Minecraft. Well, iPad doesn't accept that I put in a postcode of Brussels when I'm stationed here in Germany at the moment. <laughs> with other words, I couldn't even pay with a credit card. <laughs> I was prepared to pay another 7.99, even though I've got... And I don't know where I've installed the other software last time. I don't know which computer. It must have been somewhere. So I'm trying now on my third, on my third little, tiny little computer, because I'm... I hate to give up on these things, <laughs> but I'm I'm just saying that I'm rather a little frustrated. Okay. Yeah, Heike, so when, when we say use, what, what version, how? Yeah, when we say use use an earlier version, you don't you don't actually have to you don't actually have to download a, an older version. It's within the the startup screen of the game. You get the option to to choose the version. You can choose the most recent version, or you can choose from the list okay. of older versions. I'll do that then. 
because I really want to join you. <laughs> uh, and with the iPad, you wouldn't be able to join the server. You wouldn't be able to join the server, I think, the iPad and PC, okay. Mac versions Can don't I cross ask over the audience, is anybody else trying to install, install um, Minecraft or is trying to what join? Is anybody else still there? I'm wondering because we have 13 on the list. <laughs> they might be sick already watching you, Dave. <laughs> Honestly, I'm sick already. I'm just watching you. <laughs> well, You're running around you like a lunatic. Up. Can you please just stand still? <laughs> uh, my my stomach goes funny. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a well-known phenomenon, actually. That, that so one of the challenges. With sorry, sorry, Jeffrey. We keep coming in at the same time, but that that is a um, with these first-person games. It's a well-known phenomenon that it it affects some people in that way. It's similar to the to the effect that some people, if they're reading whilst in a, a car or on a bus, they start to feel queasy. Um, and it's something that afflicted me for many years, and it did actually hit me when I first started to play Minecraft, but uh, it was just a matter of getting myself used really? to it, which you can tell that is not a problem for me anymore as I'm happily bouncing around, but I'll try, I'll try to make my movements more careful. Yeah, thank like you. Crouch. And uh, why did that person just go on the column? Is that to escape or what? Did he quickly build a column? Yeah, it's a quick way for you to uh, not worry about the mobs. So I just, I pillar up. And pillar this up. also gives me a better... <laughs> okay, these up. are great expressions. <laughs> and I asked a couple of questions earlier in text chat, one of which is, uh, can you get rid of these swords? The swords in the game? You can yeah, get you rid of them visually. Hand. Everybody holds two swords. If you scroll, if you use your mouse but mouse scroll button, you can move along all the little um, inventory bar. You have like nine different spaces. So when you scroll with your mouse button, you can move from one space to the next, putting different things in your hand. And and why would you all carry swords all the time? I mean, if if you can get rid of them, I don't know. I'm um, even the sword at the bottom right hand side. It it's sorry. It's it's for me. It's like an aggressive gesture. <laughs> sorry, but I'm not a Minecrafter. <laughs> well, it's mainly mainly to protect ourselves. We're in survival, so there's mobs that are spawning all around us. The zombies, the skeletons, the, the spiders. They all become aggressive at night, and uh, there's some that are even aggressive during the day. So in a survival world, uh, you usually have to have something to protect yourself, whether it's a sword or a bow. You can use your pickaxe and axe if you want, but most people carry um, a sword because it has more power in order to take the mobs out quicker. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you... And actually what I'm pillaring up on is called a noob tower. That's what newbies do when they come in, when they're trying to escape and they don't have a way to protect themselves. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah, we often say in the language learning classroom or in any kind of classroom, you learn by making mistakes and in Minecraft you learn by getting killed. It's, it, it's a fact of the game when you're in survival mode. Um, so then, yeah, you, you look for strategies, ways to, ways to avoid... Uh, avoid the dangers at night, so building a tower like that or digging yourself a quick shelter, maybe quite a crude base, and then using that as a, as a safe place from where you can go out and day by day slowly put together a much nicer house. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slowly venture a bit further around the server. I mean, I mentioned before how I first uh, came, you know, 
Minecraft first came into my classrooms. Um, but in terms of playing it myself, I didn't actually start playing the game myself um, until much later. My students kept encouraging me to play, wanted me, me to experience this game as well. And eventually, um, I gave in. But um, the way I did that was I kind of flipped the whole traditional classroom process on its head. And I got my students to teach me how to play. And this was something I did by, um, you know, I had other students in the class. Not, of course, not everybody in the class is a game player. So um, I got together with those students who were novices in the game. And we kind of came up with a list of things that we wanted to learn about the game. And sorry, I'm just in the middle of getting. character that you've just fighting. Is that go. an attack by one of the monsters or what? Yes. Yes, it is. That's a, I'm a go zombie. inside. Go back up to my rooftop. Sorry, I have to run. Um, and then yeah, we got the students who were experts in the game to kind of produce a, a guide to what they what they thought a person should know on their first day in the game. And then we we came together. And we, we exchanged us all. I mean, we had to do this, unfortunately, without the game actually in the class. The school I was in at the time wasn't too, uh, wasn't too keen on us using the game during lesson time. Uh, and then I went, I went home and I tried it out. And um, uh, I, I, got, I struggled greatly still, despite all the things um, I'd been told. But there, there was this kind of, uh, you know, it was interesting how these elements of all the things we hear about good learning um, uh, how I noticed those in action that you know I tried something out and it went completely wrong so I kind of stepped away from the game and then kind of reflected on it and thought well why I thought I was doing exactly what my students suggested to me so what went wrong and then analyzing what went wrong maybe uh, I went back to class the next day and I said to my students so you know I, I tried what you told me but you know um, uh, as soon as night came, I was just exposed in the open, and they and they told me, they asked me, did you make any torches? Oh, you know, that was one of the first things you should have done, make yourself a torch. Um, and then, you know, it was that process then of kind of constantly trying something out, experimenting. Um, it's like uh, James Paul G has um, uh, in his book, what, I think it's what video games uh, um, have to teach us about learning and literacy. He, he talks about that kind of scientific process and how that's represented in, in, um, in good video games where you you have a theory and you test it out and then you make some adjustments you kind of return to the game and you reprobe you you try out your adjusted theory and you, you know this slow process of kind of trying something out what did you learn from it making some adjustments and trying again and then you, you eventually make progress and learn how to play the game and then of course it's very. It was very useful for me as an educator then to go through this process and um, and then a good reminder to myself of the kind of process that my students were going through in, in the in the classroom that they needed that space to try things out and to make mistakes and then they needed that space also to reflect and get some guidance on where they were going wrong and how they could improve and then to try again um, and that kind of coincided with me kind of changing my my approach to teaching in the classroom in general and moving very much away from the traditional teacher centered and material centered kind of lesson and moving into something um, we've heard the word a few times in the session already organic something much more organic um, uh, you know giving my learners more space to experiment and play um, and I yeah, I think I can connect that in part, at least, to my experiences of trying to learn something like Minecraft. I don't know if anybody else has uh, any similar experience that they, or maybe a completely different experience that they'd like to share with us. And the the thing, the one question I have is, because of the the nature of the uh, liveliness of this game. Are the students actually communicating during the game or do they just like build, fight, build, fight and then outside 
of Minecraft talk about it. Is that the idea of learning or, or being with Minecraft? He can, I'd say that most of the learning in, in many video games comes from outside of the game. Um, there's lots of communication during the game, but when they leave the game, it's you know reflecting on what you did in the activity, talking about who did what and when and where. So a lot of times, you know, if you're using a, a game like Minecraft, it's great to have that time in your in your lesson. Like, you know, with Dave's students, when they questioned him on his choices, hey, did you make torches? Did you dig a shelter? A lot of that just doesn't happen during the game because it's so fast. But Outside of the game is where it really comes into play. Yeah, and um, just to add to what Jeff was saying, I mean, one thing with a lot of popular games these days, and Minecraft is perhaps one of the most prominent examples of this, is this whole kind of community that appears around the game. Um, uh, online, I mean, if you go on YouTube and you do any kind of search for Minecraft, you'll you'll just find millions of hours of video of gameplay and people narrating the games. And they're maybe trying out something, they're trying out something different, or they want to show some cool trick that they learned in the game. Um, and then the people who don't go for that kind of YouTube style, they can, um, Vance mentioned earlier, going uh, Googling things and going to places like WikiHow, go, there are dedicated Minecraft wikis where people can go and read up um, on the game. And a lot of this, of course, is um, stuff that they see uh, they see in, in English and they interact with it in English. And I've had, I've had students of mine and we heard about uh, Mariana San Philippe and how he his love of the game led to him to start his own YouTube channel and to make videos about the game and to create guides for the game um, and really kind of put his English into action. And that's one thing we often talk about that's, that ends up lacking to an extent in the classroom is um, you know that practical element of putting the language to use. Um, and I find that the, the game often gives them a great vehicle to do that. Um, and of course, that has to take place kind of that. I wouldn't say so much after the after the play, but around the play, in between the play sessions. That's the time when when the language use really comes to the fore. In my interesting. Can I can I just ask really briefly about the installation pro problem I'm facing? Um, I now am again on the other machine on another little small computer. I've installed it and I get to the point of where where it says download version 1.11.2 but you said don't do it. Install that version. Okay. So install I install 11.2. Yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Continue. <laughs> You know this this being able to talk about something which you not if you're not playing you can't talk about um, and to be able to converse around the game uh, it it reminds me a little bit of that pressure we had in back in school days when everybody had to watch the latest films in order to be able to talk about the films so that you were able to talk about things you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like that. <laughs> I can't help it. Um, it's it's a little. It's very different to Second Life, where we in Second Life actually do conversations. Whereas you here, guys, you you seem so active and uh, play snowball fights and build and build staircases and what are these jumping things, the round things there? Do you collect them? I think those are snowballs that people have dropped. Oh, I see. <laughs> I was just wondering whether you, on the way, even collect, uh, I don't know, prices, whatever. How do you make money? How do you buy things? And how do you buy material in here? A lot of the raw material. You can set up an economy, but at the base, it's just trading. 
if a student is trading wood or and the other one has maybe iron The ways that you can do things there. Yeah, sorry, I think the lag's causing a bit of trouble with the, with the voice well, chat. Um, in survival, Linda, do you want to go ahead? Sorry, what you were saying about the trade. wood or you're mining below to get iron or gold or redstone. And, of course, the ultimate diamonds that they're all uh, wanting to get. So students trade with each other. I have a diamond. Uh, I want to buy some iron from you. So they just trade with each other. They barter uh, for what they want and what they need. Uh, there are, of course, things that you can add to the game that add uh, types of economy like uh, mods that have gold coins and things, and they can use that as well. Uh, that gets a little more advanced to what we normally use in class. Uh, in class, we just they just trade with each other. For example, right now we're doing uh, we do have a mod that we're using with our sixth graders. It's Fossil Craft, and so the students were divided into four teams. Each team had a leader that had to manage the other students and everyone had their objective, but everybody could help out with that objective, whether it's collecting food for their team or collecting resources. And then their responsibility was to create a museum and a zoo with all the dinosaurs. So they have to go to the wiki, do a lot of research on how to raise their dinosaurs, how to contain them and then also to build a museum for the artifacts and pottery pieces they could find around. But that's added to the game with the mod, and that's the beauty of Minecraft. You can do a simple, the simple game itself, which is really uh, complex as well, but you can also add all these different modifications to it that adds different items to it that brings um, a change to it. And so uh, at the end of the semester, what the students will do is they'll, they'll do a tour of their museum and of their zoo and what what dinosaurs they had, and they'll have to talk about their experiences and the problems they had in raising those dinosaurs. Yeah, no, for me, when I finally got to the point where uh, I was, I moved to a new school and I was able to use the game with students uh, for the first time, it was in the context of an after-school club. So there, you know, I wasn't able to to kind of impose too, too much stuff on them. There was a bit of resistance to, to the idea that I would, uh, you know, the teacher would set them a task. So we, we started to negotiate quite a lot. Um, in terms of what they what they wanted to do in the server, and we try to we try to come to some kind of um, some kind of understanding so we could work towards work towards some common goal. Um, and there, I did something like where um, I do something similar in the classroom when I'm you know I kind of play dumb in terms of. I, I pretend I don't know much about my host country, and I, you know, I want my students to tell me about it. So, uh, in in the context of Minecraft, I was pretending that I knew really very little about the game, and I'd get the get the students together and ask them to design and build a house for me, and um, uh, and then we'd kind of eventually turn that into into our base, our base of operations, a bit like we had the long house where we started our session here tonight. And um, there, were, there was kind of I had to learn there to, to create a level, an element of letting go that I couldn't be I couldn't be the person in control all the time. And again, it's about you know challenging my the, the kind of underlying beliefs I had maybe about what a teacher should be in the classroom and what a student should be. And uh, it was it was kind of difficult. I will admit that to to kind of hand the control over to the students, but um, it was something that. You know, I did. I went along with 
what they wanted. And I still tried to encourage them. And we talked about how the communication on, between them often takes place after the gameplay is finished. So we would do things like um, we would we would have we would halt the play time 15 minutes before the end of the club time, and then come together to to just discuss, you know, the progress we've made in towards the the kind of the goals we've discussed at the start of the session and then any changes to the plan and things we were going to going to look into doing next time and then students would have ideas and then they'd go away and in the few days we had until the next club they would look things up and kind of engage in some research online and you know a lot of the students in the club not all of them but a lot of them were uh, French speakers by first language so it was interesting to see them kind of Without even thinking about the fact that they were they were engaging in in all this intensive reading in English and and all this viewing of YouTube videos in English and discussing the game in English, they were they were just kind of going with it and that they that kind of barrier that they maybe often have that reluctance to speak, the shyness and all those kind of things disappeared because um, they were much more interested in the game. It seems that uh, seems Vance is the back with us now. Um, okay, I'm going to get myself back inside and say. So, Heike, um, I because I'm screen sharing at the moment, could you? Yes, sure. Uh, could you restore, <laughs> uh, perhaps restore the mic we to Vance? We kept you. Lo <laughs> I think he has something, something to add. We kept you down there, down under. Okay, thanks. <laughs> um, we can also, so like, you can freeze the uh, the screen sharing, yeah. You can temporarily freeze the screen sharing if you wanted to, give the, uh, mm -hmm. let it deliver a few parcels, and then I seem to I seem to get to the screen single player multiplayer and where er, earlier when uh, it asked me for the uh, username and password I already put that one in because I I thought I have to do that so I I think I've passed that point of no return. Again, <laughs> where I could change to the version, <laughs> because let me, let me try something here. Sorry. Useful for other people as well. Um, um, uh, I'll, I'll try to show you through the yeah, screen sharing. I'll try to yeah, show you the great. launcher, although um, that does operate in a separate window. Okay, let so me just uh, uh, quit again. the game. So let me just. Okay, I'm just going to share you the launcher. Yeah, I've seen this. Yeah. Because Is this I, what you but see? I didn't get the one Heike, when you first um, start the game. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've just had that set up for the Minecraft EVO server. So I think if you click on this yeah. uh, arrow here, um, so I've got their latest release mm -hmm. is how I can change it to the 1.11. I don't get such an arrow um, for some reason. Okay, maybe I need just, oh, sorry. Sorry, it's been a been a while since I set this up. Yeah, it could be under launch options. Okay, goodbye, Vance. I see you just off. Um, uh, sorry, Linda, could you say that again? I think it might be under launch options to change to add. So she needs to add a. She needs to add one of the the new. Uh, and just add new, and that's where she can change her version. Yes. 
Yeah. So that's it. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I only ever did this once to set it up for uh, EDR. I get news. Uh, I get they, skins, they just change the I line. get settings, and then I get profile. Ah, this might be an profile. issue. Can everyone hear me? Well, uh, okay. Um, you know, that one of the, the challenges. Of... Ah, that's where you can choose the. Re... Oh, okay, okay. They said profile. Okay, good, good. Name Evo. Is that the Evo session one? I'm finally there. <laughs> and where I can put in uh, mm -hmm. Evo session. Anyway, evil, just evil. Mm -hmm. And then once you've got that profile set up, you should have. Sorry. <laughs> and below that, I should put in the number or what? No. There's no number. Download server, what does that mean? No, I don't want to download a server. So, and then, where do I put in? I think then you just choose the version, and then, and then if you launch the game, oh, okay. and then you need to go into multiplayer, uh, and you can join the server from there. Ah, now I can choose. Right, here we go. So then once you see the screen that I've got up sharing at the moment, then you should just check that in the bottom gotcha. left corner uh -huh. it says Minecraft 1.10.2. Yeah. And then we click on multiplayer. Add server. Okay. Fantastic. And then it would be add server. Ooh. And then... Uh, yeah, the address there. And then, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, let's join the server and log in. So it's really interesting to hear that you had to change your complete approach as a teacher. <laughs> Learning from the kids, basically. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's something when we did uh, we did the game symposium last year. Yeah. With um, Edward Russell and Dave Gutrell, and um, Paul Driver mentioned it in the chat. That the fact that quite often we when we bring some new media into the classroom and he said it happened it happened many years ago with video and it's happening now with games that the immediate idea is to impose some kind of classic ELP activity on it to think about what what language is already in the game that I can exploit and what vocabulary what kind of grammar will they need to talk about it what activities can I kind of put on top of the game but yeah, he, he kind of talked about, and it got me thinking as well, and it was kind of what I'd experienced, that you, kind of, you have to rethink your, your approach to it. Um, but if you do it that way, then you end up kind of killing the game, that uh, it, it becomes a lesson rather than a game, or you've got to look at more how you can still keep the elements of what make it a good game alive, and then, um, but then guide the students towards learning something from it as well. I think I've done it, finally. <laughs> and um, it reminds me, you're right, Dave, it reminds me of the, uh, the fact that people recreate virtual classrooms in Second Life. They put down chairs in a row and have the teacher stand in front of it. <laughs> and it's the same ridiculous attitude, really. I'm finally in! 
Okay, are you in that the took me an hour and a half now. Oh, I'm exhausted. Okay. <laughs> and by this time, you've already finished your session. <laughs> Yeah. I'm finally there. I can't believe it. Okay. Oh, well, let's please. get you on camera. There we go. <laughs> Let me give you a virtual hug. <laughs> there she is. I feel. I look very, very interesting. <laughs> Just what? Yeah, you've got the standard. You can, of course, customize your okay, skin. Okay, can I look that, more that's female? A, another thing to go into another I'm time. kidding. <laughs> Uh, well, you see okay. here, you see Dakota's here with us, and uh, Linda here so with us as well. All, all got a you know, different costume, different hairstyle, different face. And what have I got in so my hand? <laughs> this, uh, the funny noises, honestly, to be honest. Funny noises. Oh, I'm in the mouse look mode. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. How do I get out of this? <laughs> Back to game. Okay, I just wanted to increase the window. Back to game. So, what do I hold in the hand? What is this? What is it? That's a potato. Some gold. A baked potato. A I potato. thought it was a piece baked of potato. gold. <laughs> a baked potato. Can I start trading that with? <laughs> I finally did it, but I won't proceed now <laughs> because it, we're running out of time with the actual session. <laughs> and <laughs> but <laughs> it's been a fantastic experience. Oh, I hear the sheep now. Or what are they? Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I think we've got sheep outside. I've ended up in the countryside, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Thank you so much for this extensive session. And um, yeah, it's Vance. Vance is gone, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. Then I officially, in his name, um, I mean, unless we want to continue with something. <laughs> I mean, it was open end. It was planned open end. Yes. So if you wanted to continue, I don't mind whatsoever. Um, but uh, I think it's dinner time for all of us. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Or are we ready to go for dinner? Okay. <laughs> Join the server. Yeah, um, how many are on the server now? Roughly? Do you, would you happen to know this? Oh, he's looking. Colors on here. Oh. I'm not sure. They're all the interesting data. Seven, apparently. Seven. Seven. <laughs> okay, there's room to expand, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Can I build my house there? Yeah, you can just find yourself a space and uh, build build your house. Although the, this is another thing. Okay, that do I have I have to chop down trees first? I yes. suppose. Okay, thank <laughs> Thanks, you, Linda. Linda, for joining. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for overlooking Marijana's request to get voice. Um, sorry about this one. <laughs>